All right there guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, I know I have been a little bit AWOL with the uh, match reactions. I had a couple of people asking for my opinions on them, but it's a bit late now, but just quickly off the top of my head, you know, Toulouse, not where we expected. We could have, I think, got qualification to the next round had we won that game. Um, so it'd have been good to have that signed off, sealed and delivered, but obviously it's not happened. And I just think overall the two games are obviously a polar opposite to each other. And I think there was at least one player performance that stands out to me that was also uh, a polar opposite. Shimikas was abysmal, I think, against Toulouse, whereas against Brentford, I thought he was obviously really, really good. And did he not get an assist against Brentford? I think he did. Um, yeah, he was really, really good uh, against Brentford. But now we move on. We've got the international break now. And then obviously when they come back, it is City, if I'm not wrong. We play City at the half 12 kickoff as usual. Do you know, like with these half 12s, I don't even have to look anymore. I already know that Liverpool have got the half, the half 12 kickoff after the international break. We've had that many of them now, it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's by the by now. I guess just to keep you up to date with some team news, Kanate is injured. Uh, he's apparently got a hamstring injury. Uh, it's going to keep him out for about two weeks minimum, apparently. Now, this to me does raise the question of how many centre-backs do Liverpool, does Liverpool need to go out and buy? You know, Kanate, as good as he is, he just keeps getting injured a lot. Matip's contract is up at the end of the season. Van Dijk will be in the last year of his contract, though I do expect that Liverpool should get some new terms, you know, sorted out of him by the end of the season. And Joe Gomez as well. As much as he's more of a versatility guy, like where he can play right back, left back, he is predominantly supposed to be a centre back, but I just don't trust that he could do it. So for me, we're potentially looking at two maybe even three new centre-backs coming into this club um, to potentially help us out there. Centre-back position, you know, Quantz is a bit of a blessing in disguise. Maybe he will get more game time next season and, you know, this season also. Uh, so maybe he'll be one of the three that comes in to help with the centre-back position. But, yeah, this Canate injury, again, is just something that's just... It sh we're shouting out for more centre-backs now. We've had the midfield rebuild and now we just need to move on and get the... Uh, the centre-back side out. Now, there's a bit of news I want to talk to you about today. So, it says here that Andre has openly expressed his appreciation for the rumours linking him to Manchester United. Now, some of you might be aware that um, the links with Andre have died down around Liverpool. It was heavily linked with going to Fulham and now it seems to be Man United again. I'm going to just look at the quotes that he's basically said here. And I'm going to just not go around all the guff and everything. So basically he said that I believe it's quite normal for these inquiries to be ongoing. They have been happening with other players as well. It's even more prevalent since our team became champions. Some offers arrived during the middle of the season and they might be more towards the end of the season. I think the one in the middle was Liverpool. However, the handling of these matters is in the hands of my representatives. The offers will reach them and then they will convey with me. As of now, nothing has materialised and we need to keep working diligently, concentrating on the remaining Brazil season to prepare for the Club World Cup. Then it says here that he was questioned about Man United's interest in him during the summer and Andre revealed that he hadn't had any inquiries from the Red Devils. He emphasised that he's content at Fluminense right now and with many games still ahead, his main goal is to help win as many matches as he can possibly do. However, he did give Casemiro a shout out, guys, basically saying that Casemiro is a guy who has a huge career. I try to talk to him a lot when we're with the national team. He's a person who gives me a lot of advice and he's a great leader. And all I can do is continue playing well. And I'm happy with these surveys and comments. Now, I guess we've all got to kind of start thinking to ourselves now, is this one gone, guys? Is, has Andre gone? Are Liverpool pulling back from this now? Um... You know, there seems to be other teams coming out there. And is this actually his agency doing this to try and coax Liverpool back to the table? Potentially. And he does speak quite glowingly there of Casemiro, who obviously is an international teammate, but they're playing a similar position. Could he be kind of seen as the long-term replacement for Casemiro at Man United? Let's wait and see there, guys, with this one. But I just thought I'd bring it to your attention that you know, United are now being mentioned with Andre. Next up, we have Liverpool have been linked with this player that I've never even heard of, right, guys? It's another Portuguese Benfica player. 
And it says here that the reports from England media have claimed that Arsenal and Liverpool are both on the lookout to sign João Neves from Benfica. It's been said that the Gunners and the Reds sent scouts to Lisbon on Sunday and were impressed with his performance in the derby against Sporting. Portuguese newspaper record, which again, I've said this several times now, is one of the first papers that was on the Nunes and the Diaz news when Liverpool went to go sign them. They are basically saying that uh, the outlet makes it clear that Benfica do not have any intention to let Neves go so soon and actually plan to hold on to him at least until the end of next season. In any case, if Liverpool or Arsenal or any other club wanted to sign him before that time, they would have to trigger the youngster's £120 million <laughs> release clause. <laughs> and it just goes on to say that Benfica could be bluffing um, to you know, to, and they could be willing to negotiate on that clause. Um, and the youngster has been impressing this season uh, in in Portugal. Now, because I don't know who this kid is, I thought I'd have a look, um, and I've got him up here on transfer market. He's nineteen years of age, Portuguese defensive midfielder, agent Gestifu, an agency that Liverpool have got mega, mega, mega connections with so far this season 11 appearances one goal one assist three yellow cards he plays defensive midfield central midfield or attacking midfield it says here he's been called up to the national team for portugal once six for the under 21 and 17 for the under 19 his contract ex expires in 2028 now just quickly to show you how much of a this gesture for you is a thing with Liverpool, right? I'll just load up the, the agency. Now, top two players they represent, Diaz and Bernardo Silva. Next up, Darwin Nunes. Then Mateus Nunes, who Liverpool were interested in. Manuel Yagate, who Liverpool were interested in during the summer. Diogo Jota, another player Liverpool obviously I've got. Vitinha, another player Liverpool were interested in. Antonio Silva, the centre-back at Benfica, another player Liverpool are interested in. <laughs> Ruben Neves, a Liverpool player that we've been interested... Well, no, sorry, a player Liverpool have been interested in in the past. Fabinho, an ex-Liverpool player. Pedro Neto, another player that Liverpool have been constantly linked with over the years. And that's just to name a few there. There's another player here as well, uh, Ryan Altinori from Wolves, is a left back who I will be covering off in another article, I think, in a bit. Yeah. So there you go, guys. Oh, is that another as well? Uh, Bradley Barcola. He was another one that Liverpool have been mentioned with in the recent past as well. So, yeah. Potentially there could be something in this one, guys. Maybe keep your eyes open for this player, Jao Neves. Um, again, I've never heard of him. It popped up today. And I just thought I'd bring it to your attention that, you know, there is links there with Liverpool. Now, that other player I just mentioned there is the left back, the Algerian left back at Wolves, Ryan Altinoli, if that's how you pronounce his name. Basically saying here that his promises have not gone unnoticed at the Molyneux and the defender has been caught by the likes of Nice, who gave it a go last summer. Now we see Liverpool have added him to the mix as a potential replacement for Shimakas. And this is coming from LE10 Sports. I'm guessing this is a French publication. And it says here that, of course, the news that the Reds could be on the move from is an exciting one, but the French website make it very clear that no transfer January transfer would take place. While they were unable to confirm whether Liverpool have, in fact, opened some sort of dossier for the Wolves player, they were told that Altenori is the subject of regular and insistent contact from clubs. That being said... Wolves have no intention of letting the 22-year-old leave in January, regardless of the offer that could arrive. Therefore, the player will be blocked from making a transfer in the upcoming transfer window. Now, again, I wouldn't touch on this one just based on this article, but it's a player that Scott links through his agency to Liverpool. So, might be one to keep an eye on. You know, again, if Liverpool are in the need for a left-back, could this be one of the players they go for? And then I think, lastly, we've got another player that Liverpool have been linked with from Brazil. Now, I've left this one till last because this could potentially be, you know, a little bit, nof a nothing burger, basically. 
Um, it's a defender at Sao Paulo, Lucas Baraldo. And Liverpool have been told that they could get him for £19 million in January. It's been said that the Reds' representatives could fly to Brazil to watch the player from close and potentially submit a bid from the signing. And then the, there's a journalist here by the name of Jorge Nicola now shows up on a video saying about Liverpool rumours um, and spoke to a couple of sources about the situation. So I'll cut these quotes here. Uh, he claims to have had talks with Sao Paulo president who guarantees that nothing has arrived from the Reds so far. And then the journalist goes on to say that he spoke to someone from Baraldo's entourage who does not believe in a transfer that expensive as that would be the biggest sale of a defender made by a Brazilian club. The journalist claims he does reckon the centre-back will be sold in January as Sao Paulo and are in need of money, but agrees that spending that amount sounds too big. Also regarding Liverpool and Baralda, outlet in Brazil today writes that people around the player claim there's been no contact or meeting with the Reds representative so far. So yeah, that one there, as it says, guys, is a bit of a nothing burger. Liverpool the probably being chucked in there. Just to get add a bit of spice to this article, I just thought I'd share it with you just because, you know, if you do see this one flying around that I don't believe it for a second, basically. Um, but just to have a quick look, you know, there's nothing of note with any sort of agency with Liverpool. He's 19, he's made 20 appearances this season with one goal, five yellows. He's predominantly a left-footed centre-back, so it's something that Liverpool are probably on the, on the lookout for. Um, but... Yeah, it just seems to be a nothing one. Let's have a quick, just quick glance at his agency, shall we? Yeah, there's no one on there at all that I would say has got anything to do with any sort of Liverpool connection here. So yeah, just in case you do see that one flying around, I don't believe it, guys, for one bit. Now, I think that's it, guys, for this video. If anyone does have anything they want to say, put a comment down below. I do have a few memberships available as well for this channel. So if you do want to put some money towards and become a member of the channel, you can do that in the membership column, I think it is. I don't know. Have a quick look. Um, and then, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's that for this. If you are interested in any of this, put a comment down below. Give the video a like and I'll catch you in the next one.